Hey guys, it's Iksun here. Today I'm doing a tutorial on Adobe Lightroom on how you can make your own Kodak Portra 400 preset. It's going to be simple and concise so that you guys can see how I edit and how I make some decisions based on the color itself and tune it accordingly in your photographs. So let's head over to Lightroom and get into it right now. Alright guys, so we're here in Lightroom and we have a photo of Faith which is a really good friend of mine. And I took this photo some time back with a Sony A7 III body and a Sony 2470G Master lens. Uh, I took this at f2.8 70mm in case you're wondering. And before we start editing, we actually need an actual photo that is taken with Kodak Portra 400 film so that we can actually put it as a reference point and we can refer to it and get some colors that we want that emulates that look. So I actually went to Google and I found this photo here by this user on Lomography. I'll put his um, user right there to give him due credit. He took this photo with a Kodak Portra 400 film and we'll be using this as a reference point. So how you do this is you go to this reference view over here where you can activate with Shift and R and then you open up this window with split screen so you can use it as a reference point. So what you do is you go to the photo that you want to edit and it appear on the right of the screen which is right over here as you can see and then you just drag the reference photo onto the left side. So there you have it, you have a split screen now and you can actually refer to this photo on the colors that you want and you want to look out for. So first thing first is you got to get the white balance right and you can use this eyedropper tool which is a white balance tool and target a neutral area. So it could be on the sky over here. So it will auto white balance it for you. And you can just fine tune and adjust accordingly. But I'm happy with this. And next we gotta work with the exposure. It's my first time editing this photo. So I'm working on it along the way as we progress through. And maybe towards the end I'll make some fine tune and adjustments. So I wanna brighten it a little bit and maybe just give it some contrast here let's put it at 15 and then we bring down some highlights so that we keep some of the details this is a great value the shadows are good so just a little notch up and then let's get some whites in and a little bit more contrast just because looking at the left photo or the black area over here it's a lot of contrast so let's try to match it a little bit and then um, since the photo is a little bit soft, let's bring down the clarity. So maybe just minus 15. And you can see her skin starts to soften a little bit. So that's, that's a little bit too much, so maybe minus 10. And you can see there's a lot of vibrance and saturation over here. So let's just bring up the vibrance. And you can see that some areas are actually pretty saturated and some areas are actually quite desaturated. So let's reduce back the vibrance to minus 10 and then bring up the saturation. So for myself, I would like to link vibrance to extra skin color and saturation is the overall photo itself. And the highlight is a little bit washed down so let's work on the tone curve now and bring down the highlight so that it's a little bit more soft and usually film photos are a little bit more faded so by bringing this point over here up you're actually giving it more fade and you can see from the dark area over here it's actually quite faded and we have to bring this area down here so that it's more contrasty so this whole area here is for the dark point and here are all the highlights and then this is the mid-tones so let's bring the mid-tones back and then bring up the whites a little bit and give it more contrast a little bit more fade now it's looking a little bit too contrasty so to bring up some details you can bring out the highlights it's looking good all right next we'll be working on some of the skin tones so usually the skin is a little bit more yellow so it's a bit of a bleached out yellow look so let's bring it here and then usually you can play around with the sliders just so you can get a little bit of the color that you want so it's a little bit too saturated so i'm gonna drop that a little bit okay 
Yeah, that looks good. So blue, you can use this as the blue reference point here. A bit more saturation and a bit of a teal look to it. Nice. All right, now that we're almost done with the colors, here is the most important part for the Kodak Portra 400 color which is actually the color grading portion where you're trying to match different colors to the shadow, the mid-tones and the highlights. So just looking at several points here, you can actually see what color there is in different parts of the photo or different parts of the highlight. Yep. So since this is the most crucial part, you can actually identify which color is in which zone or area so since this is the most crucial part, you can actually see what color is there in the shadow, the mid-tones and the highlights. So let's work from the highlights first. So you can see that there's a little bit of a light blue tinge in the highlights. So what you want to do is go to the highlights portion, which is here, and then bring it towards the teal. Okay, so I know this looks a little bit too much. Later we'll find tune it a little bit more and balance it out. And next you go to the shadows. So usually you can see that the Kodak Portra 400 has a little bit of a greenish, dark bluish tone. And how you match it is you try to bring it to the greenish dark blue portion. I like to bring it to the dark blue portion and then I'll fine balance it with the greenish tones in the mid-tone. So now this is looking Pretty overkill, but let's bring it down a bit. So maybe 20 for shadows. So you can see in the hair, there's a little bit of dark blue tone in it. And then going back to the highlights, let's bring it down. Maybe a little bit higher. Looking great. And then now to put in the last part, which is the greenish tones in the mid tones. So just bring it to the green area. Here. But definitely you don't want to overdo this portion because mid-tones comprise of the highlights and the shadows so it's actually a fine balance and you don't want to overdo it. So I'll give it just a little tinge of it, maybe just 5. Let's try it. How does it look? Maybe 5 is good. Nice. So I usually sharpen a little bit and then I'll always mask the photos because you want to only sharpen places that matter which are like the features and the model eyes and all the sharp edges actually. So by holding down the alternate key and dragging the masking slider, you can actually see where you're sharpening. So I'm going to hold and you can see all, all those parts that are highlighted in white are the parts that are being sharpened and those in black are the parts that are not sharpened. So if I stop here, the whole model will be sharp. But let's bring it up to 95. So you can see that only her features and the corner of her hair is sharpened. Yeah, that looks great. And enable profile creation. Now you can see that there's a lot of vignetting in this photo, which I really like actually. So let's do minus 12 and feather give it about 80 so that it's well balanced out and then for the highlights let's put it at 80 so it doesn't darken the highlights all the way and you can see in this photo there's a lot of grain and this is a key component to film photography the film actually gives it that unique look and for film it's always there So now for the key component which is instilling grain in the photo, it actually gives it gives so now to the so now to the key component which is instilling grain in the photo that actually makes it look like film. So looking at the left photo, there's actually quite a bit of grain here, and we want to try to emulate that. So on the last part here, which is the grain, we can add a fair bit of grain just so it looks a bit more like film. So Let's do it at maybe let's say 45. 
and let's bring down a smaller size because you can see from here the grain is actually not that big and let's roughen out the grain just so it looks similar And just a little bit more and smaller in size great so now for the last part I always like to do the cropping at the last part just so I get a so for now we're done with the photo and the last part to it is actually cropping the photo and exporting it for whatever use that you want I like to leave the exporting to the last part just so that I can see the overview of the whole photo and decide what works best. So yep, you exit the reference tool. And let's go 4-5 for Instagram. And let's keep the model in the center. And you can see for the bottom part, there's actually a truck or a bus that drove by. And I don't want this in the photo because the red color will, will bring a distraction to the photo overall. So this is good. All right guys, so this is the final photo. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how you can make your own Kodak Portra 400 film preset. Of course, every photo is taken differently and I hope you guys pay more attention to the color tone in the shadows, the mid tones and the highlights. And from there, you can actually narrow down different colors that you want and create your own preset that emulates different type of film. That's all from me today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!